Been in one of the oldest first railroads in Texas. Uh, this is actually a spur that was built later off of it, but we're in Harrisburg, Texas. I'm Jackson Burns, I'm the Redneck Archaeologist. Project Excalibur is now in full swing. is one of the oldest cemeteries in Texas. It was first built in 18, 20, the first grave was in 1820s, 1830s. We'll get more info on this, it's Bendale Cemetery, Harrisburg, Texas. Well, if anybody's watched my episodes before about searching for the Lost Twin Sisters canons, uh, you'd know a little bit about the history. And uh, recently, I've been contacted by a mystery group uh, that wants me to help find uh, where these things are now located at, uh, which is kind of interesting. So, we're going to try to do that. Now, on this series of episodes, on the Lost Twin Sisters Cadence, we're going to be looking at a different location than what we originally looked at. Uh, we're actually still going to be in Harrisburg, but we're going to be closer to where Harrisburg was really acting, uh, where the whole situation was happening. We've got various um, reports on where the location is over the years from Dr. Graves, Henry Graves who was one of the six Confederate soldiers who stole the cannons back from the Yankees. Uh, what had happened was there was a... The Twin Sisters cannons were made in Cincinnati, Ohio. And the place that made them usually on, only made cast iron cannons. Uh, so that's probably where they come from. There were a lot of people in Cincinnati, Ohio that were backing uh, the Texas Revolution. And there was actually a couple of guys that were involved with the revolution itself that were getting uh, money, getting money from uh, people from Ohio. And so a lot of these people actually bought these two cannons. Now, they shipped them down from Ohio uh, to Texas, to Galveston, uh, by Lieutenant Aaron Burns. Whether he's a relative of mine or distant collateral, I don't know. Uh, but we do have the same last name. He was the captain of the ship that brought him down. Uh, I believe they came down the Mississippi River, most likely, and went through Port of New Orleans and back over to uh, Galveston. And there they unloaded them. They were being accompanied by the daughters of, uh, by Dr. Rice and his two twin daughters. And they were shipped as, being shipped as hollowware. Uh, there was no carriages, no wheels, nothing like that. And so whenever they docked at Galveston, there was a big hurrah about it. And somebody in the crowd says, uh, what are we going to call them? And somebody else says, well, heck, there's the twin sisters of Dr. Rice. Let's call them the twin sisters. Because twin sisters' daughters accompanied the twin sister cannons. And basically that's where they got the name uh, twin sisters. Now, they were used at the Battle of San Jacinto. Most of the ammunition did not arrive. Uh, in time for the battle, so there's people saying that there's cannonballs out there from the Twin Sisters at the Battle of San Jacinto, 
or even close to it, I don't know about that. Probably Mexican shot or whatever. Um, anyhow, they were originally four pounders, and whenever they were taken over to at the at, after the Battle of San Jacinto, they were used only as commemorative uh, mouthpieces, basically to sound off during uh, different events, such as uh, Sam Houston's governorship when he became governor, and they actually used it a lot on the uh, Fourth of July before then. Uh, they would sound them off and um, one day they were shooting him off and there was a guy who was uh, got his arm ripped off by him. Uh, he was feeding it and uh, basically one of the guy, one of the other people had a, their thumb over the, the vent hole or whatever it was and then whatever he hit it wrong or something, anyhow it wound up blowing the guy's arm off the guy that was doing that number to it. So that's whenever they quit messing with them, and they let them lay dormant. Uh, they had them on Market Square downtown Houston uh, for several years, and uh, they actually moved around the state. Uh, they went to Austin once, supposedly. They were going to try to take them to San Antonio. Never, no evidence of that ever happening, but evidently they were there in Austin, unless it was a different set of twin sisters. And then basically it got back to uh, Oh, Louisiana wound up getting them, and so it went to the state of Louisiana, or to Louisiana, uh, as scrap, and there was one man who acquired one, and the other man who basically, uh, or not, a, the, the other one was sent to an ordinance, and one man acquired one, so one was in, you know, the ordinance, and the other was in private hands, uh, so what Louisiana did is they got them back, reboard them from four pounders to six pounders, and when it became six pounders, that's what they had, uh, what they took to back to Gal uh, to uh, Texas. And uh, so, what they did is they attached a plate that said from the state of Louisiana or whatever to uh, from the city of Cincinnati, Ohio, donated these to Texas for the Texas Independent. And the state of Louisiana allotted seven hundred dollars to refurbish these cannons, and that's what they did. They basically reboard them cleaned them up and you know, made them fireworthy. However, when it got back to Galveston, they found that only one of them would work. Uh, one of them had been spiked. And how it had been spiked, nobody really knows. But only one of them was in operation during the Battle of Galveston. And Sidney Sherman's son, also named Sidney Sherman, uh, Lieutenant Sidney Sherman, was killed at the Battle of Galveston fighting with one of the twin sisters. Now recently, there was a Yankee uh, paddle wheel uh, that they used, that the Yankees used in the Battle of Galveston. Uh, it was recently discovered, and one of the big cannons that the twin sister fought against on that boat, the paddle wheel on the Yankee boat, uh, has recently been brought up. And you can see that here in this photo. So, cannons are being found everywhere. Now, that's not the only cannons that's been found on Buffalo Bayou. Uh, there was one, actually, a cannon that was found in 1837 by a ship captain, a ferry boat captain, that just happened to be stopping to take a leak or something uh, there at the battleground and, and found it. So, there's a lot of mystery going on with all these cannons. There's been some found in... Uh, Clear Lake, uh, Clear Creek, Clear Creek, um, all over. So, who knows? Mystery of all the cannons, or you know, something else, because we don't really know if it's a, you know KGC, the Knights of the Golden Circle that buried these things, or if it was just Confederate uh, people, uh, Confederate patriots that buried them, or whatever. Like in the case of Dr. Henry Gray's, it's a possibility that he's just a patriot, but it's also a possibility that have been part of KGC. Or it could have been a deeper plan, which I'm going to go into, uh, with General Sidney Sherman, who was the hero of Battle of San Jacinto. I'm Jackson Burns on this episode. Keep watching. To be continued, the search 
for the Lost Twin Sisters Cannons. Treasure hunting at its best.